Super Bowl Sunday, not all about the big game. For people who are not the biggest fans of football, maybe the focus is on the food or maybe the halftime show, or maybe it's those commercials. Big name brands hoping to win over new customers as they vie for the eyes of more than 100 million expected viewers. Joining us to talk about what to expect in those commercials is Charles Brooks, a marketing professor at Quinnipiac University. Charles, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. Of course, happy Super Bowl Sunday. So walk us through the art of these commercials. What do brands look for in making these, building these to catch people's attention? Well, really the key, the most important thing is capturing attention. Um, the companies have to break through the clutter of not only the excitement of the game, but many people are at parties, there's food and drink involved, and the excitement of the other ads. So the most important thing is to capture that attention and to make something that customers are going to remember and hopefully become part of the discussion on social media on the days following. So there seems to be a formula with some of these commercials. Humor seems to always be a big part of that formula. We have some of these commercials pulled. Let's take a look at one of these for Bic Lighters. Hey, Snoop, Martha, this Bic Easy Reach Lighter is perfect for lighting bowls. Of floating candles? Well, right. Or a big, fat, real fat torch wick. It helps to keep my fingers away from the flame. I know. That's my Bic Easy Reach Lighter. I only borrowed it, and it's great for hard to reach places, right? Yeah, you pretty hard to reach since you borrowed my lighter, Willie. I can't hear you. These veggies are sizzling. I want my big easy reach lighter back. Willie! So we got Snoop Dogg, we got Martha Stewart, a winning combination right there, Willie Nelson as well. Talk to us about that formula of humor celebrities. How is that a winning formula? Well, one of the really interesting things with this ad is just the range of celebrities that they've chosen because it really helps um, capture more of the audience that will be watching the Super Bowl by having a range of different actors. Then there's all that element of surprise of what are they really making um, fun of in terms of making the lighter the real core of what's going on. So there's lighthearted humor, there's celebrities, and I think this will be one of the ads where, where people will remember the message of you're not gonna burn your fingers if you use the Bic extended reach lighter. Yeah, and as we talk about these celebrity cameos, something we have seen in recent years are these reunions of popular TV shows from years past. We have another one here. This is a commercial for booking.com. With so many choices on Booking.com, there are so many Tina Fey's I could be. So I hired body doubles to help me out. Splurgy Tina loves a hotel near Rodeo Drive. <laughs> oh, Tina. Wild Tina booked a farm stay to ride this horse. <laughs> Glenn Close? With millions of possibilities. You can book whoever you want to be. That's my line. Booking.com. Booking. Yeah. Okay, so this is automatically one of my favorites because 30 Rock is one of my favorite shows of all time. <laughs> uh, but in recent years, we have seen this kind of rise in these reunions, TV series reunions. What's driving that? Why is that so appealing to people? Well, one of the things that makes that really appealing to an advertiser is it helps to make that immediate connection with the audience. It's familiar faces that the audience have already developed a relationship with. With, and they're able to connect that relationship from the shows they were in to the products that they're advertising. And this also speaks to this nostalgia factor that we have seen in recent years as well. That's become a pretty popular branding tool too. Absolutely. And this year you're going to see several ads that really tap into nostalgia, particularly um, the Budweiser ad that features their Clydesdales again. Gotcha. And then another big trend that we're seeing, diversity, inclusion, we're seeing, you know, more people in these ads from different backgrounds. We have a Doritos commercial right here. Let's take a look at that one. Oh, looks dynamite. It's not 
Dynamite! Es dinamita. Abuelas! Been looking everywhere for you. Dina? Mita? Go ahead. Try us. Heard some Spanish in that commercial. What makes that one stand out? Well, that one combines several elements that we've been seeing. First, there's the star power of the two actors that are featured in the ad. And then we have these two great grandmother figures. So we're starting to stretch not just across ethnic groups, but across different age groups. Um, it has a great story behind it. We see these empowered Howard grandmothers that are taking on the arch nemesis that's trying to take that last bag of Doritos. It has the humor, it stretches across different groups, and it really is an ad that I think people are going to be talking about next week. Yeah, all this stuff makes you realize just how much thought process goes into these simple 30-minute, 30 30-second 30 advertisements. There's a lot that goes into it, the art of making a good Super Bowl commercial. Charles Brooks, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Really appreciate your time. Thank you. I love your show. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Thanks for watching, man. Have a great day. Happy Super Bowl Sunday.